Humans are returning to the moon. They haven't been there for more than 50 years. But how do you prepare for a visit to such a different world where your body weighs only one-sixth of its earthly weight, where everything happens in slow motion, and where equipment carefully tested on our planet can surprise you in many unexpected ways? It turns out that there is one way to experience the feeling of being on the moon while still on Earth, or rather a few thousand feet above its surface. Hello, I'm Teresa Poltarova and I'm a senior writer at Space.com and today I'm here at Bordeaux Airport in France and behind me is a very interesting aircraft. It's an Airbus A310. Since 2015, the French company Novespace has been using this plane to conduct parabolic flights. That is flights that simulate weightlessness or reduced gravity, such as lunar gravity or Martian gravity. And tomorrow I'm going to take part in one such flight. Parabolic flights are best known for simulating weightlessness. You must have seen footage of people floating around the aircraft cabin. Pilots create these brief spells of no gravity by putting the plane into short, carefully calculated periods of free fall as they follow a wild up and down trajectory of steep climbs and nerve-wracking dives. But it turns out that if you fly the parabola just a little differently, you end up feeling like on the moon or on Mars. Apparently, this plane is the largest in the world that can be used for parabolic flights. The cabin has been stripped of almost all of its internal equipment. There are only a few seats left and there are almost no lockers on board. I'm meeting Eric de la Salle, Novespa's chief pilot and captain of my flight. With nearly 30 years of experience piloting parabolic flights, de la Salle is one of only eight European men capable of executing these flights with such accuracy that generates reduced gravity with scientific precision. Hello, I'm Teresa from space.com. Would you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? I will be on the flight tomorrow and I'm quite nervous about the whole thing. No, it's absolutely no problem, with great pleasure. Please uh, have a seat, Teresa. I'm uh, Eric Del Salle, I will be the captain for the flight tomorrow. Wonderful. So can you tell me a little bit what's going to happen tomorrow? Where are we going to fly and what are we going to do? Tomorrow we will fly uh, near the, the coast, near the Atlantic coast, uh, far, far from uh, Bordeaux. We will be flying uh, flights that simulate lunar and Martian gravity. Is that true? Um, yes, it will not be a simulation. It will be a real uh, um, apparent gravity that we have on Moon or uh, on Mars. So what makes a difference between a parabola that gives you the lunar gravity and the Martian gravity or no gravity at all? Uh, it's just a matter of how much we push uh, on the stick. If I give you a ball and please throw it in such a way it will stay as long as possible in the air, so you will throw it up and then from the time you release the ball it will become to fall even if still climbing at, at the beginning yeah? in the sun. and then we have the zero we just push then, then so the, then the aircraft will uh, we, will pull up uh, first and then when we reach a given altitude we push on the stick so that the aircraft will do that as if it was falling down in the, in the vacuum, that is for the zero. And for to keep uh, Luna, it will be a little less sharp and much uh, even less. Unlike on your regular flight, there will be four pilots on board, three of them actively controlling the aircraft at the same time. One pilot will be in charge of the plane's pitch, the other will control its roll, the third will act on the throttle. After each set of parabolas, one pilot will take a break and will be replaced with a spare. The difficulty is to be very accurate and that's, that's our objective. So we share the three axes on the aircraft between the three pilots. So one is flying the pitch and it is the, making the, the zero G or the moon or March gravity. And we use this kind of thing here that we put here, like that. I plug that to have the radio. And then so, from now on, this pilot 
can only act on the pitch and I cannot do that with that. You see this one, you can do both pitch and roll and with this one, I can only use pitch. And during that time, the other pilot will use a very technical equipment, these two things here. And it can act on the roll without pulling or pushing, so that the two pilots are flying the aircraft at the same time. And the third pilot is acting on the throttle. Let's go back in the cabin. Preparations for tomorrow's flight are in full swing here as well. Ten scientific teams from all over Europe are installing their equipment, making sure it's secured in a way that it won't pose any risk during our wild ride. Here I'm meeting Neil Melville, the European Space Agency's parabolic flight campaign coordinator, who will serve as my minder, making sure that I, the rookie flyer, won't cause too much chaos during the flight. We are doing uh, some real science here, some um, fundamental science, uh, but also some technology tests and demonstrations, because uh, these flights are going to be very special. They're about uh, lunar gravity and Martian gravity. So we're testing hardware and systems that we're really going to take to the moon to see if we can get them working the way we want in a much kind of cheaper and easier environment than flying all the way to the moon with it. So are there any other ways how we can simulate lunar gravity on Earth apart from being on a plane like this? It's not easy at all. Um, there are a couple of like drop tower type solutions that can do lunar gravity on a very, very small scale, but only for a couple of seconds and only for hardware. If you want uh, uh, to get yourself, to get people into lunar gravity, you have two options. You can either come on this aircraft or you can go to the moon. That's it. That was all really interesting. I think I've seen enough today and we will be back tomorrow in the morning. Good morning. I'm back at Bordeaux Airport. It's the 25th of April 2023, 8 in the morning. And today is actually my 40th birthday. And I'm going to celebrate it in style. Right now, I'm waiting to receive my anti-vomiting medication. Parabolic flights are sometimes called the vomit comet. And I will be honest with you. Do you remember that kid that used to throw up on every school trip? That was me. But never mind, this drug that I'm just going to receive cuts the risk of nausea to 1 in 10 people. So let's hope that it works for me as well. I also need to change into my flight suit. And now I'm ready to go. We will fly west of Bordeaux, above the Atlantic Ocean, climbing to the altitude of about 20,000 feet. That's below the cruising altitude of commercial airliners, but well above the altitude frequented by lighter aircraft. Our pilots will then perform four sets of seven to eight parabolas, two lunar sets and two Martian sets. In between, we will have only three five to eight minute breaks. This is partial T. It's a little bit different to um, what we normally fly for those that have flown before with us. Please make sure you uh, pay attention to the safety crew. Make sure that we all stay uh, healthy and safe during the flight. Right, we are ready to go. Each parabola starts with a climb at a 50 degree angle to the altitude of nearly 30,000 feet. You can hear the engines roar. The acceleration pins your body into the floor with double the force of Earth's gravity. It's a peculiar feeling. But it lasts only about 20 seconds. 30. 40. 50. 60. 40. Then injection. The engines stop. Silence. Everything slows down. Experienced scientists don't waste any time. But the rookies, like myself, can get a little carried away. Welcome to the moon. It feels magical. This is seriously cool. The, the 2G is not that cool. I need to lie down. The plane is descending. Our bodies get pinned down again. The experienced flyers stop in their tracks. Us rookies seek a more comfortable position on the floor. Then about a minute and a half of steady flight, normal gravity. And then it starts again. I brought with me a lunar gravity indicator, 
It's a soft toy moon handmade specifically for this occasion by my colleague Daisy Dobrievich. In lunar gravity, it spins and bounces like in slow motion. Gradually, I'm gaining more confidence. Lunar gravity feels good. But what will remain hard for me until the very end are the 2G phases before and after the reduced gravity. Wow, it's really quite interesting. The 2G during the pull-up feels a little funny, but um, yeah, wow, amazing. For now, I won't allow that to stop me enjoying this otherworldly experience. Now it feels as if I only weigh 10 kilos. She's right, 10 kilos, definitely not more than that. Nice and easy. <laughs> it's time for our first break. We are receiving a very special visitor. One of our pilots has a break and has come to see the experiments. He might look a little familiar. These days, he is better known for flying to the International Space Station. Well, one of our pilots today is actually the astronaut Thomas Peske. I'm not kidding. Could you say hi to Space.com readers? Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to fly with you today. So we're on this flight that is simulating lunar gravity. What role will these flights have in the future Mars um, moon exploration? Well, it's, it's here that we're testing everything. As you can tell around you, uh, there's the technology, there's the engineering, the science, uh, not so much the astronauts, but they'll come at some point to train also to prepare for those flights and get a taste of what it's going to be like to walk on the moon. Uh, that's the only place on Earth that you can test with people around their experiments and, and experience what, what it feels like to walk on the moon. So that's where it starts and it's all going to happen up there. And while I'm trying to survive the uncomfortable 2G phase on the padded floor again, Thomas Pesquet has a go piloting a device that might one day help astronauts transport equipment on the moon's surface. For me, things are soon going to get a little difficult. We're more than halfway through. We have finished all our lunar parabolas and also one set of the Martian parabolas. And we still have one Martian set to go. I find the 2G during the pull-up particularly challenging, but so far so good. I haven't, I didn't have to use my back yet, so it's, it's all good. Despite the strong medicine that I had received before the flight, I lived up to my childhood reputation and once again was the sickest kid on the trip. But in the meantime, all science teams completed their tasks without much difficulty. When the final parabola finally arrived, I was relieved. 1G felt good. It was a two hour roller coaster and certainly the most intense thing I have done in my whole life. It would take me a while to process the experience. <laughs> so now I know what it feels like to walk on the moon and Mars. I will certainly remember this experience for the rest of my life. But right now, I'm quite happy to have my feet back on the ground of our very special planet Earth. Thank you for watching.